lips on the right, hot mic on the left. Every single week is a lyrical fact. Uh, 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 Santana Moss Show Podcast. Travis Thomas, Santana Moss. What's up, brother? We in the building. Uh, I would just like to make reference to this iced out chain that my partner in crime is wearing. Is this new or is this like a, has this been around and I've not seen it? It was a birthday gift to myself. Nice. Yeah, it was a birthday gift to myself. I actually, it was a two-part chain. It was two chains. Two chains? Two chains. And one of them, it was a nameplate, Tanner Man, and then this. Where's the Tanner Man one? Uh, I left it home. I don't like to don't like put the, the tag chains. on myself. I don't like to walk around with the big old Tanner. Very nice. You know? But yeah, it was a birthday gift, and I hadn't given myself a gift. Uh, I was one of those guys that every birthday was something big. It was either a Roly or Brightling. I was, I was a big wash guy, or, and so that was the other part to my mm-hmm. birthday gift. I got myself a new truck. But um, yeah, the chain was something that I needed. And I, I didn't need it. It was something I wanted to add to my collection. And so, I, you know, I went out there and made it happen. Lesson learned here, folks. Do not cheat yourself. Treat, Treat yourself. yourself. Okay, birthdays are very important. Why, y'all? Shout outs to the jeweler, too. He did a oh, yeah. great job with that. My man, AJ. AJ. Down in Miami. AJ and the MIA. Hey, by the way, AJ, I'm going to come see you. Uh, Cubic Zorconia for my budget. Hook a brother up. And get what AJ going to tell you. What? See that price? <laughs> and he going he gonna to tap that thing in there. But it's Tanner Price. Ooh! He going to take care of you. AJ, take care of my boy. Yeah! You hear him, AJ. He Wait watches the podcast. I oh, know he does. No doubt. Uh, I want to <laughs> say this as we transition into taking L's. So that concert was Saturday night, correct? Yes. yes. Great. That's where I took my L, my friend. While you were partying with Beyonce and Jay, this is how I played it. My wife said, hey, I'm going to get tickets to Jay-Z and Beyonce months ago. I said, you go. I have no interest in seeing them. I'll stay home with the sun. There's a big UFC fight that night. There's a boxing match. You know I love that stuff. I'm like, it would be great. I'll put him to bed, have some drinks, watch the fights. Boom, little Trav time, right? Wouldn't you know it, Santana Moss. Put the son to bed. Everything's going to script. Pour my first drink. I sit down to watch some violence. UFC comes. Hey, it's a big fight night. UFC fight car. Bro. Power goes out. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. It's not storming outside. I didn't hear a car crash you, you or anything. The and everything. I hey, said, what's going what's on? What's going on out there? Whole block. Dark, pitch dark. Wow. I'm like, what in the hell? Call the power company. Oh, yeah, sir, we got a couple calls. We're on the way out there. We should be there within the next two hours. Okay, you'll be there with it. Okay. Get there. Two hours later, I start working on it. An hour later, boom, power comes back on. Guess what's over? Everything I wanted to see. And wow. it's bedtime. Wow. I mean, I just I can't make this stuff up. I work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I finally get some time for myself. All hell breaks loose. That sucks. Taking L's for you, sir. What is it? Well, you know, we're talking about taking L's, and I have a lot in my day. But the one L that I <laughs> seem to not shake is every week. Every week. <laughs> and I keep telling you every time I'm on this show, I'm like, I have to get rid of my direct TV. <laughs> for some odd reason, it doesn't matter if I'm Home when power comes on, or if I'm away and it's it's being recorded. Something. When when I start to watch power, my TV my my connection fades. What it is goes happening. Up. The genie too. The genie too. Direct TV. I'm on this podcast, and I don't mean to call you out. I'm one of your customers, loyal customers for over twenty something years. This is me talking to you. This is how I talk to you on the phone when I call. Nice and calm. I'm so mad right now, but I, I respect whoever on the other end of this conversation, this phone, this phone that's trying to help me. Can you please find a way to correct <laughs> the problems I'm having? Now, I don't know how many people are, are tuned into power when I'm tuned into it, but why does mine always cut off? <sighs> why do I pay my bill and have to deal with the start this thing over? As I chuckle down to the basement to hit the box that they should have put in my front room where I'm at most of the time. Right. But they decided, hey, we'll put it in the basement. Right. I have to go down there and reset it. And then <laughs> I come back up and now it blickers and clicks off and on until it said, okay, you restore power. And now power is halfway done. So I, I'm taking L every, every time power comes on. And I got to the point now, I said, I'm going to beat it. I'm going to record it. And I just wait to see it. And I recorded and did the same thing. So 
Um, I think I'm done with taking L's from Direct TV. Um, besides the L I took from Direct TV today, I took an L getting here to the office. I, oh, I, that was. I, what I, happened? I, I tried to get here as late as possible. I said, I said I mapped it out. Twelve thirty, I would be there. I went and had my breakfast at IHOP. I had my little egg whites and my turkey bacon and, and my um, my two uh, pancakes. You know, my under five hundred uh, calories, calories uh, meal. Yep. And I say, oh, I'm going ahead. I put on my nineties music. I'm chucking them down here, and I get here and I just see Roadblock, Roadblock. And I, as I'm texting. To text the you know to um, Oscar and everybody like hey how do I get here I right. never went we no other get way here. I said let me go ahead and check into Ways Ways should should lead me the way Ways led me down the back road and up the back road and I said okay I'm gonna beat all this traffic and go around the other side and hey there's a block over there yep and then I look again I said let me open this thing up on the phone and see where the back road is at because it's not telling me where to go right. so I'm gonna go ahead and open this thing up and and find out for myself. And as I found out for myself, I found out it's a back route. So now sure I, can, I know how to get out of here. I, I followed your ass in. And, and then it, uh, uh, I, as I'm parking, I'm like, oh, this white car been following me all this while. It's you. So I guess you saw me and say, hey, I'm going to yeah, follow that. I had no idea. I was already up, you know what's Creek without a paddle. And when I saw you, I said, well, at least I'll have someone with me if we're yeah, lost. Yeah. So I followed you in, and thank God you knew the way. I will say this, DirecTV. We would love your patronage on the show if you would like to sponsor it. But if not, please, Santana's being very calm with you. Do not make him turn into ghost from the show power and come get you. You don't want it. <laughs> hey, look, man, I feel like I took an L this weekend. I'm going to tell you okay. why. The grand scheme of things, it was a win because I got through it, but I felt bad. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, I like gambling. I ain't going to lie. I don't, I'm not a card player. I don't shoot craps. Like, I like gambling on sports, okay? It's now legal in New Jersey, Delaware, Mississippi, West Virginia. So I was going to Philly this weekend, as I mentioned at the top of the show. Mm -hmm. Told the wife, I don't want to hear no crap. I'm stopping at Dover Downs on the way to Philly. I got some football bets I want to make before the season. She didn't give me too much, so I stopped, right? We get to the casino. And, you know, we got the baby with us. So I'm like, all right, look, I'm going to just be honest with you. I've never been to this particular spot. I'm going to guess they don't allow kids. I don't know. Y'all are welcome to come in. But I'm telling you right now, if we get to the door and they say no kids, you got to kill some time. I'm going to make these bets, right? Sure enough, we get up there and they don't let her in, her and my son. So now I feel terrible, Tana, because I'm like, damn, I didn't think this was really going to happen. Mm -hmm. So now I go in to gamble on sports. My wife and nearly one-year-old child are walking through the casino <laughs> like by the slots. <laughs> My baby face just looking at all the lights. And I'm like, oh, this is, this is, I'm a bad person. <laughs> so I go in. I didn't even, t I mean, I didn't even rush. I took my time. I had to make sure the, the bets were on point. No doubt. So I bet against the Ravens. I think it was eight wins. Mm -hmm. I bet they would win below that. I bet against the Bengals, it's like six and a half wins. So I think they're really going to suck. And now I put some money on Ohio State because their odds are terrible now with everything going on. Coaches and everything. Yeah, yeah. so I, I, put, I put some money on them. And then I left. So it took about a half an hour. And she was cool with it. But I felt real bad. I felt like a degenerate gambler. So, so with all that you, you bet on, if you win, what, what's that oh. going on? So if That's I win, what I want to hear. So I'll I'll put it like this: the the NFL ones were okay. I put I think seventy five down on on the Ravens and the Bengals. I'd get back like one eighty, not bad. But if Ohio State wins the championship, I was blown away by this. If they win the championship, I put seventy five dollars down. I would get close to like five hundred bucks. It was like a four hundred something payout. Gotcha. That's crazy. So that's imagine fair. if I put real money. Yeah, that's fair. You know I mean, what I mean? There are guys out there that put five stacks on whatever. So What's real money and fake money? I mean, true. M monopoly money is fake money. That's true. Money is money. It's all me. relative. So at the end of the day, you get a chance to huh, stack something. True. Whether it's a dollar or two dollars. True. If you win, you win. So, uh, Do I you like feel it. like I did my family wrong? No, you didn't. Because I told her well, ahead of time, right? Well, with your son walking around looking like this. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he wanted to play the slot. She wouldn't let him. Guy got Google. He <laughs> <laughs> said, Ma, let me get 15 on red. Speaking of taking L's, though, man, and, and, and you know, you know me. I told you, this, this is my daily do. I think I just, L's just pop up. They bounce <laughs> off me these days. I, 
It ain't a day I don't take an L. And I don't like I say it's a lesson. I tell my kids all the time it's a lesson. Yeah, it's a lesson. We ain't losing because of this. It's a lesson. Right. That's right. I don't know which one to talk about. Whether it's my Direct TV oh. or my Citibank cards. No Citibank because we we just <laughs> on Direct TV. We every need to <laughs> on them because I damn sure I'm still I'm still trying to find enough energy to call these guys and let these guys know that I have to go downstairs and reboot this damn genie too for so damn long. What but happened you know with what? the city card? City, if anybody know me in the DMV and Miami, if I ever walked into your establishment, whether it was a club, whether it was a restaurant, and used my city cards, bear with me because guess what? It might say decline. <laughs> <laughs> and all of them, I got six debit cards. And you know, when you got debit cards, you know, at the end of the day, you can say, hey, this, this is nothing but my money on I don't, I don't have a credit card. Man, my city, my city bank debit cards would decline on me in a blink of an eye. Why? I can literally, they accuse fraud for everything. If, oh. if I bought something, if I bought something, if I'm in Leesburg, if I bought something at McDonald's and I end up at Burger King because Mac, Burger King have a better um, a fry or if McDonald's fry is better than Burger King and I say, hey, you know what? I'm going to get a fry from McDonald's. I'm going to get a burger. And I'm just hyper, you know, right. thinking and saying, I, trust me, I won't do this. They would decline it the next time I, I purchased something. And I don't went through the measures of saying, okay, talking to the people, saying, hey, this is me. I call you every week. And I yeah, have to go through the same thing. It's me. Thing. It's not fraud. And they'll tell me, okay, well, we just saw you purchase that, such and such. That's me. Okay, thank you. But, hey, can you can you give me a text or give me some kind of alert whenever this happens again so I can be aware and I can, because they have that now. They have yeah. it where they text you Don't and tell, say, is this you? Or type whatever. one for right. yes, yeah. type two for no. Sure. And I'm okay with that. I have that because I have six cards. I know you do this. But for some odd reason, with my cards, we have a hard, they have a hard time doing that with me. So I've changed numbers. I mm. gave them my new number and find myself in this situation over and over again. So, Citibank, just like I told DirecTV, yeah, you know, the only reason I'm still with Citibank is because the guy at the Reston of uh, Virginia branch, uh, Vincent, he's been taking care of me. Shout outs to Vince. Vince, the manager, man, trust me, if it wasn't for Vince, I would have been left. There's nowhere to go. It's Damn, SunTrust bro. or either Wells Fargo or, or, or Chase. And I don't like none of them either. So at the end of the day, I'm trying to find somebody that I can go to and I can. I've been with Citibank since I've ever had an account. And I was probably 18, 19 years old. So from 18, 19 to 39, I'm having the same problem. And Vincent's like, <laughs> I called him from Bahamas. I told you, I called him from oh. Bahamas. They, trust me, the most embarrassing situation I've ever dealt with is I'm getting a free room. Everything is paid for. All I have to do is get my card for incidentals. Oh, I got declined. And it got declined mm. in the Bahamas. And I'm sitting here like, ma'am, I got money all over. All, can I go to ATM or, a or something? That's a nightmare. And I sat there on the phone with Citibank, and they wouldn't. They told me that it was, it was fraud being <laughs> done to my card because I was in my, Florida just a day ago, and <sighs> I came from Virginia before that, and they said I was in three different places in three different days and they had to cut my card off and I have to wait for a new card. So taking L's to me is normal. Well, you know what? You should put your money in the Travis Bank and Trust <laughs> and you can <laughs> subscribe. Our cards de- With get declined. Travis, I trust. Yeah, our cards get declined because <laughs> of insufficient funds. <laughs> it's just that simple. Uh, you mentioned taking L's. That's a perfect transition to taking L's. Man, I got two people in music that I want to give the L's to. <laughs> First of all, we'll start with Madonna and the bizarre MTV Award tribute to the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin. Madonna got up there. First of all, I don't know what the hell she was wearing. Secondly, she does this like whole bizarre speech that it was more about Madonna. Grown up now, granted, she's from Detroit. Aretha Franklin's from Detroit. So well, she's she, not from there, but she, she kinda, made a move there. She's right. from Memphis. She kind of tied it together yes. with Detroit and all that, and I get that. But it was it was more about Madonna and and how I guess Aretha, you know, Inspired influenced her. her. Inspired her. And then she did her own song. She didn't even do Aretha's music. Most of the time you hear someone paying a tribute to something or someone, right. they're singing their song. So so why was Madonna even in that situation to even pay a 
tribute to her. Right. For one, I know she wasn't going to sing none of her songs, but that's yeah. not that's not her era. When I heard the whole story about her right. tribute, I I didn't know nothing about it. I had to read up on it a little bit, and everyone was just giving us so much flock because it was all about her. Yeah. So I say this. Why would they even put her in that situation? Yeah, you're right. You know, I mean, I understand that, yes, we want to pay tribute. We want to, you know, uh, recognize her career, her fabulous career, and then just everything she's done for, sure. you know, R&B, you name it, soul, music. all that. Music, period. But Madonna wasn't the person you go out there right. and say, you know, let me put her in this, this, this situation, you know. But I would say that I appreciate her trying to pay homage. Mm-hmm. You know, we appreciate that. But at the end of the day, you have to understand where you're at and what the people is, are expecting of you. And it's I don't almost, think she understood that it's, enough. It's almost like Fergie when she did the national anthem at the All-Star Game. She tried as an artist to take a chance, yeah. but it, maybe it wasn't that the wasn't right time. That wasn't something for you. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. At the end of the day, you could have got there and said, hey, I want to give, you know, I want a uh, less moment of silence yeah. for, you know, who, whomever you yep. were speaking on. And, and, and to me, I would have gave you more credit than that than Keep trying it simple. to— you know, make this thing about yourself. No but hey, it's Madonna, so we I, can't I, give it too much. I I almost remember something similar with the VMAs, and it was after Prince had passed, and they did kind of a weak ass uh, tribute, or it might have even been the Grammys or something. And then the BET Awards were like two weeks later, and I remember seeing a promo where BET was like, "You know what? We're gonna give you a real Prince tribute," yeah. and then they did. They had every artist ever. Uh, to a Prince tribute. So I wonder the next award show in the rotation, whoever it is for music, if they're going to kind of, right. if they're going right. to take that and be like, right. look, this, this was d- handled wrong. Watch us. It's We're going right. to, you know, honor the queen of I soul the right way. Out, I just found out from a friend of mine that um, Aretha was from Memphis and the home that she grew up in is still there. She bought the home and told him, do not touch it. Wow. Leave it as it is. So this past weekend when she passed, a friend of mine went in and took footage of it. He went there and saw it, and everyone left flowers cool. there and everything. And she's big in Memphis. I never knew this about her. I never knew that she even was from Memphis. You know, you always hear about the Detroit days because she moved there with Motown. She right. moved there because she she started with Motown, and that's where she stayed. She later just, hey, this is home. You know what I'm saying? Even after all the money she made, she found a place in Michigan to stay. But uh, just to hear some of the things I heard from a friend of mine, he went up to Memphis to, you know, visit his um significant other and he's he told me like hey man i didn't know aretha franklin was from here and wow. everyone is like paying homage and and and, and tributing her and out there to her home and That's and cool. he showed me so much footage of i should i should have had it for the show but i didn't think we was going to have to go that deep into yeah. it so um you know great career a great woman stood up yeah. did a lot for music and um beyond her genre you know what i mean and uh it, you, you you hate to see them go the way they go you know, we know one day in this world we are going to be gone, man. So um, definitely shouts out to Aretha Franklin and, and what she meant to the music world. Bro, the other one is, what's up with your boy Kanye, man? Did you see the young ass slippers he was wearing at 2 Chainz wedding? <laughs> it's a myth to his <laughs> madness, man. You know what? It's a, Kanye does what he does because he's promoting something. And and I young think, ass slippers. I think, I think them slippers are gonna be out soon. It's probably gonna be uh, probably one fifty that we are gonna have to go online and, and buy. And you probably gonna have to stand in line at the store or either online and still don't get a chance to get those slippers. So Kanye finds a way to take any L that he takes and make money out of it. Now so, you a shoe guy. I'm you a, got Yeezys. I know damn well, Tanner. You ain't going to buy half your size in slippers because it say Kanye on it. <laughs> I wear thirteen. I ain't wearing no damn sixes. In slippers, because Kanye said it was cool. If the slipper got a little boost on it, because it's Adidas, you know what I'm saying? I might go ahead and and, and, and copy it, whether it's uh, half my size or not, man. But Kanye ain't taking no L's, man. I care less what you want to say. Save Kanye from this segment, because we're going to talk L's, but at the end of the day, Kanye, it, it was an L for everyone in the world to see him like that, because you don't want to see Kanye... Um, attending anyone's wedding in slippers. Right. But he had his Louis Vuitton suit on, and... They thought he had dirty socks on, but it was just his socks matched his suit. And the slippers did as well. <laughs> and to be honest with you, I won't be surprised if we hear later that those slippers, oh you know, God. gross over, you know, some 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 crazy million something, you know. So I'm, I'm not even tripping, just. man. Kanye going to find a way to get out of this L, this L list. Hey, all right. So, Tana, I want to go to taking L's, right? Mm-hmm. But I want to kind of combine it with the story I'm looking at. <laughs> 
So parents are I now already know. <laughs> parents are now hiring Fortnite coaches <laughs> for their children. Now I feel like I sort of get why because I think a lot of these gamers are getting money these days from esports and things of that nature. So I feel like there's no difference of a parent putting their kid in a sports camp to get better at a sport, hoping for eventually a scholarship to college or whatever. Um, Your thoughts on the parents hiring coaches for Fortnite, and then please transition that into the L's that you gave your son. Well, first of all, (laughs) if parents are going out and finding coaches to keep to uh, teach these kids how to be better in Fortnite, I feel cheated already <laughs> because my mom and dad never paid for anyone to teach me how to beat Mario Brothers. I mean, <laughs> I remember those nights of playing Mario and trying to get the King Koopa to get the princess, and it was some long nights, but it never was a night like my son experiences now. My kids, my son, my daughters, they be up 6 o'clock in the morning. I, I was just in Miami, and um, I recall getting up, and I'm going to the restroom, and I hear, oh, uh, and then I hear a giggle. So I'm like, who the hell is up this time of morning? What's going on? And I peek out the room, and in the hallway we have our little, um, you know, area where they're on the computer. And I see my nine-year-olds sitting there playing Fortnite. Mm. And before I got a chance to even say anything, I kind of just like, they didn't even know they I saw them. I just looked at them. I'm like, you know, it's 6 o'clock. It's already done. Whatever is done, is done. So I went back to sleep. I woke up the next morning. My morning normally start around 7, 8 o'clock. And I'm like, look at them. Now they passed out in their rooms. <laughs> they didn't get up to after almost, you know, that evening. And then I allowed, you know, told their mom, like, look, take whatever it is you got to take from them. So my son the next day, he thought he was going to pull another, you know, one of those 6 o'clock, you know, all day things. He don't woke up at 6, so I'm going to go to sleep at 6 a.m. His mom went in there and took the game system, the computer, mm. the iPad, mm. the damn Nintendo Switch. He mm. has so many different outlets that he can play Fortnite on. So these parents that I took my hat off to these parents that's going out their way to do this because I understand now it's the day and age that everyone's paying to make sure their kid is elite at whatever it is it is. Right. You know, we was just elite at going outside and scratching up our knees and, and our elbows. Actually playing, playing sports. Yeah. Exactly. So now these days parents are saying, hey, I will pay top dollar to make sure my kid have a chance of a scholarship. I don't know if you get scholarships playing Fortnite, but if they do, I might have to sign my kids up because they sure enough been trying to sneak in some long hours. And if they can be that long and be out there participating in this Fortnite, then they should be able to do that same thing with their studies. So um, Savion took some L's, and, and he know he'd probably take a lot more if he tried to pull one of them all-nighters again. Bro, I think this could be a record for L's on this show. That That's four. You said the gaming system. Gaming system. The iPad. N- Nintendo Switch, the iPad. And the phone. The computer and the phone. That's five, that's five of them. Lord have mercy. And he's still sitting there wondering why everything's been taken from him at night. <laughs> Poor kid. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Savy. We love you. Do you think kids nowadays even know who King Koopa is? Man, they, you know it. what's so funny about the situation? They do because Mario is never— it's still around. He's never died. <laughs> he's yeah. like, he, you bring a new system in and Mario is there. Him and him and the princess and Luigi and, and everybody All of them else. still— Yoshi. He finds a way to put himself in some kind of game system. But, um, I mean, that's—it's crazy that what we— experience that our, our yeah. years are growing because I, I remember those summers bro yeah Honestly, yeah definitely. I remember those summers of course. being up all night but you gave yourself man one o'clock two o'clock was great no doubt it's kids up the next morning yeah that's crazy and then can't do nothing the next day because they're so exhausted matter of fact I remember video games was like kind of like a prize at the end of the night. No if you did, Everything, you played outside, yes. you did your chores, you yes. did all that, you weren't a pain in the ass, then they'd let you play games video for a couple hours. Video games now are to be expected. It's like a lifestyle. Kids. It's right. like I get up in the morning, I brush my teeth, wash my face, rest the game. And then I'm gaming. And you're like, hold on, did you eat lunch today? No, I wasn't hungry. Because you have the game in front of your face. Did you eat dinner? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to eat in a minute. It's serious. Like, I remember <laughs> just this past weekend, all my kids ate at 12 midnight. And I'm like, why are you Damn. Why are y'all eat? We ate four or five hours ago. Oh, I was upstairs. Fortnite. Fortnite, man. Fortnite, what's up? Give me a, give me something. That's the other Let me hold on. I, I feel like my dad would try to play Tech Mobile or yeah. Mario 
or I remember him trying to play Sonic the Hedgehog. I ain't playing Fortnite. I ain't playing Fortnite. It doesn't even look like something that I'm. I heard the conversation alone from my nephew. My nephew was over to on the headphones, and he was like, "Man, this this guy. He's awesome. He's he's on Instagram. He's on Facebook. He hasn't been beaten." And he's like, "Oh, what I would do to kill him one time on Fortnite." <laughs> And I sit there and like, so who is this dude that they talking about that's supposed to be so bad that he's socially lost. everywhere right now? Everyone knows about him it's on every crazy. network, you know? And I'm like, man, this is crazy because I asked my son, I was like, so what is Fortnite? What is it about? He's like, man, it's everyone in the world just playing a game. Like, I think it's a hundred or a thousand people out there at one time, but they can be from anywhere. It could be you and me playing and kids in Iowa somewhere and they don't like, man, who is tough stuff and who right. is six you know right. what I'm saying who's and, eight to the nine and yeah and who is this guy they trying to win and it's, it's one guy he's probably played everybody and Beat he's, their ass. he's beating everyone and so my nephew was talking about it and my son was like yeah he's dope and I'm like man you guys are off the chain with right. this Fortnite stuff Fortnite so, oh but you know you can't be mad at him man kids put down the Fortnite and pick up a book Where? expand your mind baby Expand your brain. Expand your brain and listen and watch the Santana Moss Show podcast because we lit. That's what the kids say. Liddy. We litty. It's Gucci. Spotify. YouTube. We're on everything, Tana. We're on everything. Apple Podcasts. Get at us. Subscribe. Listen. Like. Share. Do it. Santana Moss Show podcast. It's a Rizzo. It's a Santana Moss Show. Former through your ball game. Number 89. Hustle all the time. Travis on the right, hot mic on the 